So today we are playing a mega janky combo deck in standard that is able to do 20 evasive damage in one turn, literally out of nowhere with cards that no one uses. Hey everyone, Hex here, and today do I have a janky combo for you. I want to thank a subscriber called Colin, I believe their name was, for inspiring this one from my comments in my last video. And if you haven't already, then go ahead and hit that subscribe button below to not miss out on future videos as we explore all the cards in the Brothers War. If you have any combo ideas, let me know in the comments below. But onto today's deck, and we're going to try and win with the lesser known green prototype creature, Iron Crawl Crusher. So this worm is a 4-6 for 7, or a 2-5 for 2 and 2 green, and says whenever it attacks, target attacking creature gets plus X plus O until end of turn, where X is the crusher's power. With prototype creatures, you can cheat out the full creature several ways through reanimations or fight riggings, etc. But we're going to attempt to blink it on our opponent's turn with Touch the Spirit Realm. This creates way more value to our creature, and it will easily be a 4-6 when it comes time to attack with this. So we need to find a way to boost our creature's power before combat. So the spell we're going to use will be Boon of Beside You. It says target creature gets plus X plus X until end of turn, where X is the greater mana value along permanents you control. So if you have a full cost crusher and you play this, your creature will attack for 18 damage. Like I said, janky. Now, the rest of the deck is what I think makes this combo playable. We have a Selesnia control shell with a couple of extra cards to enable evasive attacks. And those are still Seraph. It's another prototype creature that gives a target creature flying, lifelink or vigilance until end of turn. This card is super strong and can win on its own, but pair it with an anointed peacekeeper and you can attack with a vigilant lifelink at each turn. Peacekeeper is a vigilant 3-3, that when it ETBs, you look in opponent's hand and you get to name a card and opponents must play two more to play or activate that card's abilities. It's just so strong even just to know what you can play around. The other newish card we've got is Gaia's Gift. It gives plus one plus one until end of turn to target creature and also reach, trample, hexproof and indestructible. So another great way to give our creature some evasion. With these tools, the deck plays pretty nicely. And like I said, the rest of the deck is kind of controlling in style. So we've got soul partitions for some removal or to even save your own creatures. Depopulate for those go wide decks and sunset revelry. A nice trick I've found is if you want to play a uh, revelry turn two, maybe the opponent has a creature out, tap any pain land you've got to lose a life, then you end up gaining four back and two creatures too. Lastly, we have wedding announcements for some board presents and the Wandering Emperor. This can even be used to pump up your crusher just enough to sneak a lethal attack through. We're playing 25 lands and that's today's combo day. I played so many games and I did win so many with this, not always with the combo, but just the deck as a whole. It just seems to stick around and finish off the opponents in one hit. So have a watch and let me know in the comments if you have any combos that you'd like to see in a future video. All right, on the draw here, pretty nice hand. I do like having a Sunset Reverie in your opening hand. We have our Brush Land as well, so a little uh, sneaky little combo here. If you want to play the Sunset Reverie on turn two, you can play your Brush Land and uh, tap it for mana, exactly like we're about to do now. So opponent has a creature out, you play your uh, Pain Land, and then you can uh, make sure you tap it for in this case white, and then we go down a life, play Sunset Reverie, and we gain two creatures, and we gain our life back. So pretty nice there. Hellpack Hyper Piper comes down, so it looks like green werewolves. So our hand's okay. We don't have any of our prototype creatures, so hopefully we can find those pretty soon. But the Piper could be annoying, so luckily we do have an extra copy of Touch the Spirit Realm, and uh, we'll play that here and we will attack and pass the turn. We want to just knock the opponent's life down slightly, as if we do manage to combo off with our creature, our crusher, um, we don't always do 20 damage. 18 damage is, uh, is sort of tops. We can do 20 damage, but we need um, extra cards in our hand for that. Fortunately, uh, the opponent has allowed it to go to Night's time. So they're able to look at the top six cards of their library, reveal a creature card from one of them, put it in their hand, put the rest in their library in any order. So they find a Gala Greeters as we draw our Crusher. All right, so we have a combo in our hand. We just need to get this Crusher down. We need it to survive. Opponent's playing mono green, it looks like, so fingers crossed it does. Now, the Crusher we cast for its prototype cost. So when that actually happens, it changes the card. Uh, the mana value of the card is now just four, it's not seven. So we have to be wary of that when we play our Boona beside you. 
which is why we're playing Touch the Spirit Realm in the deck, as we can uh, change the card to its full cost. So, a few hoops to get through, but that's why we're playing a control style shell here to uh, enable that to happen. We find a Steel Seraph. Now, <laughs> that's really good as well. Um, the Steel Seraph will now allow us to hit our opponent. Uh, probably unblockables. We'll give it flying if we needed to. So I'm going to go to attacks first, and I'm going to actually attack the opponent with this uh, creature. It's going to become a 4-5 now. We double its power. If they don't block, well, it depends what they do. If they don't block and they go to 14, then I believe we can win next turn if we play this Steel Seraph now. If they had blocked, I may have um, held back slightly, but yeah, we should be able to do... 15 damage next turn by casting the boon of beside you onto our crusher and give it flying so unless they play a flying creature or remove one of these two prototype creatures we've got we should be okay so yeah i doubt the opponent thinks they're about to die gala greeters could be annoying if they can cast a creature now and gain some life and okay they attack with the two four fours that's fine by me we'll take eight we'll go down to 14 And yeah, we should be okay to win without um, the Touch the Spirit Realm on this one. If we draw a Soul Partition, that doesn't change what we're going to do. If we cast our Boon of Beside You here, pre-combat on our on our Iron Crawl Crusher. It becomes a 6-9. And we can give it flying. And doubling its power during attacks will make it a 12-9. Uh, and along with the 3-3, that's 15 damage over the top. So... Yeah, opponent niced us. Oh, they have a Tamiyo safekeeping to gain two life. All right, fair enough. They go up to 16, so they're not actually dead on board. We do have Gaia's Gift in our hand, which we can cast to get that extra damage through. So maybe that was slightly lucky that we had that, but that's why it's in the deck. It's, uh, it's there for a reason. And yeah, we did enough damage to kill our opponent in one, and that's the combo. All right, on the draw here, and another nice hand. I do like this one. I do like having the Sunset Reverie here in our opening hand. Still Seraph and the uh, Boona beside you is pretty nice as well. Opponent with a Selesnia land and we find our Crusher. All right, so combo assembled. We just need to get this all down on the in the right order. And it's a Beast Caller. And we find another beside you. All right, so might be able to find a slightly different way of winning this game. Sunset Reverie is just so powerful in this situation. Two really annoying blockers for our opponent to have to get through. They find a Roaring Earth. Okay, so we got a little bit of landfall triggers here. Iron Apprentice. All right, so a counter style deck. Um, trying to make massive creatures. Well, we can just block here. We do have this. Uh, okay, fourth mana is good because we do have a depopulate in our hand. So I think one of the options we have here is just to. Kind of do nothing, let them overcommit to the board, depopulate, and then throw down our combo. Um, the other thing we could do is play one of these prototype creatures and try and find one of our indestructible spells, and then depopulate with it on the board, but I think we're going to get run over if we're not careful. So opponent finds another land, and that ups the power of the apprentice. And another apprentice, okay. Okay, so this is just um, eating into our hands a little bit. I kind of want them to overcommit here. Oh, it's a fight rig in deck. All right, fair enough, fair enough. So I don't think they could quite activate fight rig in here. That did take me by surprise, to be honest. Yeah, we're gonna just depopulate the board next turn, reset everything, and then uh, take it from there. And hopefully it'll take them a while to get back to this fight rig in, or to get to fight rig in um, the hideaway card. As they pump their Iron Apprentice, yeah, that's probably the best thing to do. Spread the wealth. They may be suspecting a board wipe soon. We are playing the colours. Um, anyhow, yeah, we'll just play out our forest and uh, play Depopulate. Alright, back to square one. No targets for the uh, Beast Caller's Death Trigger there. So I kind of like our hand. We have the Peacekeeper, so that can slow down our opponent. They find a sim uh, Simeon Simulacrum. Okay. 4 3. Oh, and a land. Okay. Goodness, it's a 6 5 already. So, 
Wow, that's a pretty neat uh, interaction the opponent has there. Now, I want to try and make sure we win this game, and I think the best way is to win from surprise. So, right here, we can cast this Crusher. It's a 2-5 of we'll casting it for its prototype cost. Now, we do have two Boon of Besides in our hand. Casting each one on the Crusher is going to give it plus four power, so it'll take it to a 10-13. And then as it attacks, it will do 20 damage. So we need to just hope that they attack with this Simulacrum. And they have a Beast Caller as well. So we'll take this damage. We can cast our Steel Seraph to give our creature flying to set ourselves up for a couple of turns. That would be a, an option right now. But I chose to go with the wedding announcement at the time. I think looking back at the video in hindsight, I should have played the Steel Seraph there. I just uh, probably wanted some uh, board presence. Gonna attack anyway to drop the opponent's life down. We're gonna create a blocker with a 1-1. One -one. And as long as they don't have removal, pretty sure we can win next turn. We can cast the two Boon of Beside Yous onto our creature and that should be 20 damage opponent just find a land so yeah they're going to just attack with these two creatures hopefully okay they do and uh, we're just going to chant with our 1-1 one -one. and this will set us up for a victory next turn so yeah in hindsight probably should have played the seraph but i didn't and we get to do what I wanted to do in the first place and create a uh, 20 powered creature and attack our opponent and kill them in one. So we got there in the end, nice little victory there and we got to see the uh, full power of the crusher. Alright on the play here, hmm, not the best hand we've ever had in our lives. We're looking to play on turn 3 here so hopefully we find a 2 mana spell that we uh, can cast opponent with a Scoured Barons comes in tapped. That's a two mana spell, we can't really cast that, it's a Boona beside you. And opponent with their Swamp and it's a Tenacious Underdog. Okay, so Underdog's slightly annoying. Oh, we do find a Crusher, all right. So again, we've got our combo in our hand. We've got the Touch the Spirit Realm, the Beside You and the uh, Crusher. We'll play the Peacekeeper first, see what we're dealing with. Their hand's not great, but we'll uh, name Morbid Opportunist. We don't have to name something from this hand if we didn't want to. But yeah, I mean, I don't really know what they're playing, but we'll name the Opportunist because I'm sure they wanted to get that done next turn. Their hand's a lot of sort of value style cards, so we won't be blocking the Underdog. The Peacekeeper is... Uh, is way too valuable for that. So we're looking at getting the Crusher down, finding a way to use the Touch the Spirit Realm to blink it, and then um, casting the Abuna beside you to whack our opponent, try and find some evasion along the way as well. Few hoops to jump through to get there. We find a Seraph, which is exactly what we're looking for. So we'll drop this Crusher. Now, opponent is playing black and white, so they may remove it. They may not understand what the value of that card in our deck is, and they may go straight for the Peacekeeper. We will see. But we get to attack here with the Peacekeeper due to its Vigilance. And opponent is hovering over our card. There's loads of ways to pump creatures in um, in this set, in standard at the moment. Um, I did have a lot more instants uh, originally, but I needed to dumb them down slightly and go a little bit more resilient. Opponent finds a Destroy Evil, which is a uh, neat little answer for our creature there, which is unfortunate, because I'm sure they would have taken out the Peacekeeper if they had an opportunity. They hit us for three. And we have the Steel Seraph to play here. So Steel Seraph and Peacekeeper is a nice little interaction as we get to give our Peacekeeper flying, and due to its innate vigilance, it uh, remains as a nice hefty little blocker. I think the Steel Seraph is super strong, and just for three mana being able to give another creature lifelink or flying is pretty powerful. The ability could have read uh, when Steel Seraph attacks, but it's decided to be a bit like the Stormseeker, where it can just be done 
on the turn it hits the battlefield. We find a, another copy of Touch the Spirit Realm. All right, interesting right now, we'll go to attacks, we will target the um, Peacekeeper with flying and we'll just keep attacking our opponent. Our life title is pretty nice at the moment, so we'll just pass the turn open with the Wandering Emperor available. We also have Touch the Spirit Realm as well, which is pretty nice. Opponent with a Panicked Bystander. So they're just a, it looks like an Orzov kind of value deck here. Opponent attacks us with their Underdog. And the Companion. So they clearly want something to go into the graveyard to bring back with the card that they've got in their hand. I'm not going to allow that to happen. So we could have blocked the underdog there with the Seraph and then touched the Spirit Realm after. Probably should have done that. I think I was in two minds whether I was gonna cast the Wandering Emperor at the time, but it, it is what it is. So we get to uh, flicker our creature here and we have to do it in the in the uh, second main phase because it comes back in the end step and you want it to be available for attacks next turn so we've now got a nice chunky little 5-4 uh, with our boon in our hand we should be presenting lethal here make sure you cast the boon before combat I guess it doesn't matter too much with the steel seraph that's a an ability of the um, the Crusher. Yeah, we get to give our Peacekeeper flying here, and it's a different way to win here. Okay, on the play. A pretty nice hand with the two Booner beside you. I'm not going to turn up, turn up a hand like this, even though we don't have any of our prototype creatures. There's eight prototype creatures and just the four Boons, so we'll definitely keep those. Uh, we do find a Peacekeeper, opponent with Is It Lands, so Spells deck probably, and a Bank Buster, that's not necessarily what I expected to see. We find a Gaia's Gift, alright, if we can just find one of our Crushers, we uh, have a combo in our hand. Opponent's hand is Tezzeret, recognize Bank Buster, um, and just a load of land. We'll name the Bank Buster. This will tax them even from using the Bank Buster that's on the battlefield to draw cards, so I think it's a pretty nice card to... Uh, to name with a Peacekeeper. They didn't have a card that they could play this turn when I saw their hand last term, and it's a creature, a 2-2 flyer that discounts artifact spells. So it's just showing what they are. They're an artifact deck. Obviously, they've got Tezzeret in their hand, so it's pretty nice for them. But yeah, we'll just attack with the 2-2 uh, and uh, pass the turn. We have... Um, the guy's gift, so we're under no obligation to do much at the moment, and if they don't do anything, we can use the Wandering Emperor. Yep, and there's Tezzeret. So nothing we can do about that right now. Gonna have to find a way to kill that the old-fashioned way with damage. And they animate their Bank Buster to a 4-4. Okay, and they just attack with the 2-2. I guess they're trying to protect their Tezzeret. Um, had they actually animated, uh, attacked with a Bank Buster, I would have definitely killed it. But we can create a 2 2 here with our Emperor, and then we can uh, kill their Tezzeret this turn. So we'll put a plus one counter on the Peacekeeper. We'll give it first strike, and we'll throw both our creatures at Tezzeret here. And the Bank Buster can block the 2 2 if it wants but the 4-4 is going to get through. Or they can block the 4-4 if they want and they'll lose their Bank Buster. So pretty nice. I actually chose to use the extra copy of Boon of Beseju to uh, kill this Bank Buster here. It's not really doing much in our hand and we got to pump the token we've got to a 6-2. Eh, got rid of that card that was on the battlefield. So they're still being taxed on their bank busters, so if they want to cast the other one, which they do, it's going to cost them uh, four mana, but I guess there's a discount because of the uh, Mechanaut that's on the battlefield. Opponent chooses not to attack. Gaia's Gift gives reach, so there's always something to remember there. But we drew a Steel Seraph, and I definitely won't pass up playing that immediately. I think most decks I've made in the Brothers War 
contain either the Steel Seraph or the uh, the black one, the Flesh Gorger. I think that's such strong cards. So yeah, we'll put the counter on this uh, Peacekeeper. And just attack as a as uh, hard as we can. Uh, attack with a 5-5 five, five lifelink uh, with Vigilance. Don't need to necessarily give it flying now. Has first strike as well. Our component goes down to 12, but we go back up to uh, 23. So yeah, they're gonna need to deal with this board pretty sharpish. I do like our hand. We're playing a much more sort of reactive game here where we, we've got stuff to do in our hand. Surge Hacker Mech is going to target one of our creatures to attempt to kill it. And yeah, we have the, uh, we we're going to flicker anyway, so we can do that to our Steel Seraph. And that, unfortunately, there's sort of spell fizzles. Well, the spell doesn't fizzle, but the uh, trigger fizzles. And uh, they attack down our Wandering Emperor. It doesn't kill it. And yeah, Steel Seraph comes back as a 5-4 and our opponent scoops it up. They were dead on board. All right, on the draw, uh, hand looks all right. A couple of Steel Seraphs here, and we've got the land to cast those. We find our second Wandering Emperor. A couple of planes for our opponent, and a Rafine's Informant. So you've got to expect a Reanimator deck here. I think that's all that Rafine's Informant is using. And we find a Touch the Spirit Realm, and that was just a Valorant sense that they uh, got rid of. Rumor Gatherer. Okay, so not really sure what we're up against. Not much to do right now, so we'll just dump one of our Seraphs onto the battlefield. Can't sit around and do nothing, so if they've got removal, they've got removal, but they've already got rid of a Valorant stance, so we expect they've got one more of those in their hand, and that does not kill the Seraph with an Illuminator Virtuoso. Okay, so Canivy sty style drawing deck here for them. And a backup agent. So, so a few cards which you don't often see. But we still need to try and find a way to win here. They've gone very wide. And they can attack with a 3-2. Well, I'm not going to block that. We are down to 13. So we find our Crusher. Okay. Interesting here that we kind of want to leave open the Wandering Emperor, but we have to try and find a way, I think, to win this game. And I think the best option is to play this Crusher. At the, at the time, I felt like if they'd had removal, they would have cast it on the Steel Seraph. So giving it Vigilance as well means that the Wandering Emperor doesn't work. It's Elsbeth Resplendent. All right, I didn't expect that. But that's a pretty nice card because they can give the Virtuoso here flying. And they attack with a 3-2. I guess they realize how the Seraph works, so they're a bit concerned about... Well, they're trying to protect the Elspeth here. We find it depopulate. I mean, I mean, it's a good card. We would lose our creatures, though. I wish I had had that before I played the Crusher last turn. Really want to play the Touch the Spirit Realm, flick, using it to flicker one of our creatures. But I think right in this instance, it might be best just to um, exile this Virtuoso, just so we can do some damage to Elsbeth. I think Elsbeth could cause us concerns. The rest of the board isn't that much of a concern at the moment. So we do seven damage to Elspeth, we deal with her. Worst comes to worst, we can always depopulate. But I'd like a couple more mana there, if possible, because we can always cast our Gaia's Gift before we play the, pre uh, the depopulate, just to save our creature. But opponent with a Celebrity Fencer. Um, and they attack with their team, so we go down to seven. I mean, our Steel Seraph gives lifelink, so that's pretty nice. We find a land, which is good. So we'll go to attacks. We'll give the uh, Crusher here lifelink. And we'll attack for a 4-5. Uh, uh, it's a 4-5 here. It's worth noting with these prototype creatures, if you cast them for their prototype cost, 
the card's mana value becomes the mana value that you cast. So you it doesn't use the mana value at the top of the card. It's changed its attributes. But we can change those back by flickering our card. That's why the Touch the Spirit Realms in the deck. The opponent's gone super wide with these white creatures. If they go too much wider, we're just going to depopulate, but we're holding open the the wedding, the Wandering Emperor right now. I'm glad we waited with the Wandering Emperor as we have managed to uh, get some board presence here. And opponent is going to go to attacks. They've got to expect us to have something in our hand now. Yeah, they come in with Rafine and, uh, well, Rafine's informant. And the fencer, we'll just exile this, gain two life, lose three life. But next turn, we're going to gain a load more life back with the Steel Seraph and Crusher. So we find a Touch the Spirit Realm, which is a pretty nice card to have. Okay, so that kind of changes what we may do. Definitely going to want to attack this turn with Lifelink. And it all depends on do we want to attack with the Seraph or do we want to attack with the Crusher. I think the Crusher is going to be better, so we will attack with that. Yeah, we'll give it lifelink. It's going to become a 6-9, I think. Sorry, a 6-6, six, six, yeah. And I'm sure they're going to block, but I'm going to gain 6 life out of that and put us back up to 16. And now we can get to the sort of end game. And uh, I've put a stop in the opponent's second main phase so that we can cast the Touch the Spirit Realm. Yeah, if you leave that too long, then it will go all the way through to end set, and it'll be too late. Rumor Gatherer comes down. They're scrying to the top. And a backup agent. So the opponent's gone super, super wide. I'm glad we have snuck some evasion in this deck. I think this is why the Steel Seraph is just so good here. And I'm thinking we have them dead next turn. We have them very close to being dead next turn. No, we have them dead next turn because we can flicker our crusher now. I guess they're still in attack. So they're going to go for the Wandering Emperor. Going to actually block. I do need the Wandering Emperor to stay alive because I need the plus one it's going to give. So we can give the... Uh, the Steel Seraph plus one plus one to block the Rafine's informant coming through. If we had a sixth mana in our hand, I would be more inclined to have not done that and just let our Wandering Emperor die. But we can flicker our three six here. And opponent is waiting. So yeah, we're going to be able to attack with 4-4 uh, four, four next turn, our uh, Steel Seraph. And this creature as well, we'll be able to give flying and that will be more than enough damage. So yeah, 4-6, so that will be 12 damage plus the Wandering Emperor as well. So opponent is dead on board. And we do have another Wandering Emperor in our hand if we need to uh, cast that to put another plus one counter or plus one damage on our uh, creature. So I hope I explained that well. <laughs> I was thinking a lot with this particular game, how to make sure we, we get through the uh, victory. And uh, yeah, we can just attack with everybody here and uh, give our Crusher flying. And I guess this is 14 damage. Opponent is thinking what to do. And they allow us to attack for lethal. And it's finished. <laughs> they're going to get there. Not sure what the uh, stick is here. They must be in full control. Oh, okay, they have a Valorous stance. Okay, that is absolutely not what I expected to see. In fact, that totally took me by surprise. <laughs> I should have maybe thought that they had something in their hand that they could uh, deal with. That's my. That's completely on me. That's my bad. But we'll play the other Steel Seraph, and uh, we'll present Lethal next turn instead. So they they had the answer in the end. 
I guess turn one they discarded a Valorous stance and they were probably sandbagging that all game. Opponent plays a fleeting spirit, yeah. They can't kill us and we have nine damage in the air, so should win definitely next turn. We just draw planes. And we have to target something, so we'll just target each other, each of our other creatures. Yeah, and we're going to end up even going up to uh, 25 life here. So the Steel Seraph has been pretty strong here, but the Crusher did the damage in the, uh, the mid game there. An opponent dies. So thanks for watching. I must admit, I did have a lot of fun with this one. It really is great to play off meta decks every now and again, just to freshen things up, especially if you're facing the same decks day in, day out on the ladder. Hit the subscribe button below for future content, and I'll uh, speak to you again very soon.